Hello to you all. We're going to be focusing today on the first of our three energy systems for A2P with OCR. And we're going to be focusing on, although I haven't written it in here yet, the PC system. And by PC, we're actually referring to the ATP PC or the A-lactacid system. All of these things have the same uh, name. You'll also sometimes see the uh, CP system as well. But these are, this is the systems we are, or these are the names of the system we're going to have a look at today. So first of all, just reflecting on what we did in our last session on energy continuum. And if you haven't already watched that, perhaps you should do that before um, continuing on with this one. We're saying that for a performance, perhaps like a long jump, we've got Rutherford over here in his uh, Olympic gold winning performance, of course. We're saying that the duration is short. And of course, we're saying that for PC, it is less than 10 seconds, but the intensity is very high. And if you go back to the energy continuum uh, session, you'll actually notice that when we're talking about the PC system, we have to use this term of very high intensity and the time scaling is less than anything less than 10 seconds, which of course this event uh, would be included in that. Now of course our system, our PC system, our ATP PC system begins with um, the high energy compound of ATP and again if you haven't looked at the role of ATP go and do that now. But we've already described that ATP breaks down in the presence of ATPase to form, I'm just going to write it in here, you could draw it in as well, to form ADP, adenosine di or 2-phosphate, plus P, plus most importantly, energy. Okay, I'm just going to start writing over Greg here. And it's that energy which we use to power movement. So of course we end up in a situation, once that um, reaction has taken place, that we've actually got now a product that we can no longer use, ADP plus P. And we actually need to know what we do with that in order to resynthesize this product, ATP, to be able to use it once again. So essentially what we do is we store uh, in our uh, muscle cells as long as as well as uh, other cells of the body we store a product which we refer to as our p oh sorry our, our c p our creatine phosphate or our phosphocreatine and that has this structure like this it's one creatine uh, group with one uh, phosphate group and what we can do here is we can actually break the bond between the creatine and phosphate we do that again the arrow indicates uh, the other side of the equation at the moment, uh, but we actually do that in the presence of an enzyme called creatine kinase. And in the presence of that enzyme, we release um, creatine uh, plus our phosphogen group uh, plus energy. So we now have some useful products. Uh, and of course, because we've got the release of energy, just as we've got above here, we actually call it an exothermic reaction. But of course, what we can do, if we now bring our ADP down here, and we match that up with our phosphogen and our energy from here, what we can actually um, say is that we can take our, AD, our ADP, okay, so we take our A, uh, let's put it in as we did before. Let's take our ADP, which of course we've brought down from here. Our ADP. And uh, we've coupled that with the phosphogen group from here. So plus P. And we've combined that with the use of this energy. So we've used that energy to form, and of course it's fairly obvious. We've now got ADP plus an extra P, which of course will now provide us with nice and simple adenosine. No longer 2 or diphosphate, but we now have adenosine triphosphate. And 
then we can go ahead and reproduce this reaction stage once again because we've taken our ADP from up there, we've combined it with our phosphogen from creatine phosphate and the energy which is released from that reaction in the presence of creatine kinase and we have once again formed ATP and the ATP can repeatedly be used to uh, power movement. Now then, a couple of extra points we need, to, we need to make. First of all, we would say where this reaction happens, and I'm sure most of you know already, but this reaction occurs in the sarcoplasm, and that is in the fluid of the muscle cell. So that is where the site of reaction is. Make sure in every question you answer on phosphocreatine system, you reference that it occurs in the sarcoplasm. Secondly, we have the energy yield, the EY, is one to one. What we mean by that is how much ATP do we get from the fuel source? The fuel source is creatine phosphate. So for every one creatine phosphate, look, one there, we get one ATP giving us one to one, exactly uh, what I said a moment ago. But remember, the fuel source is creatine phosphate. Furthermore, we have no byproducts. Now, some of you might be sort of screaming at the screen here. Well, James, what about that P we've got up there? Well, of course, when we resynthesize our creatine phosphate, we've got a creatine left over, and we've got a phosphogen molecule left over. In the presence of oxygen, we can actually recouple um, those products to create a store of creatine phosphate. Now, as you can see, I've just brought Greg Rutherford back into the middle of the picture here. And the point I want to make really before we finish this session is that in this type of performance, going back to that original energy continuum material, we're saying that this is a maximum of 10 seconds store. So we are arguing that we have enough of this creatine phosphate stored in our muscle for roughly 10 seconds of high-intensity exercise. Any greater uh, time period than that, we would have to resort to other anaerobic methods which ultimately cannot provide enough high intensity um, energy. So we have to bear that in mind. But because this creatine phosphate is available and ready to use in the muscle, this is a very fast reaction. We can actually power immediately at the start of exercise this very high intensity, powerful explosive exercise. So we say advantages of the system are that it's high intensity, that it's immediately available in the muscle. We might say there's no delay for oxygen delivery. We'd also say there's no harmful byproducts. That is an advantage of this system. There are some disadvantages, however. First of all, it is short. We only have a 10 second maximum duration of performance. And finally, do you know what the last weakness is? Well, it comes down here. Look, our energy yield, when we bear in mind that in a few session times we'll be looking at the aerobic system, which can actually uh, recent recent size 38 molecules of ATP for every molecule of its fuel one to one could be consi considered and get ready for this word as inefficient an inefficient source of energy so that is our phosphocreatine system our creatine phosphate system our ATP PC system and our a lactic acid system all the same concept all the same thing with slightly different names just make sure you can spot those in a question Likely questions for you are to describe the reaction, perhaps. Therefore, you talk about the breakdown of creatine phosphate to recouple with ADP to form ATP. But very likely, you might be asked for a kind of an evaluation, a strengths and weakness and advantage and disadvantage of this performance. So make sure you can do that. Also, I shall be back soon with future exercise physiology videos. Keep tuning in. Any feedback is always gratefully received. Have